So welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, just, uh, I've been with Nginx for five years and a week. And uh, now I'm leading the professional services team uh, for the Nginx uh, business unit um, of F5. Uh, pr prior to that, I was the product manager for unit projects. So I tend to know a few things about how it works. Uh, so for, for the audience, uh, who is here uh, is going to be seeing unit in action for the first time? Okay. And who has seen the unit demos before? All right, that's, uh, that's beautiful. We have a crowd of, um, uh, of people who just want to learn and want to see a few things. So first of all, I have absolutely zero slides for you. And that's, uh, that's by design. <laughs> but I have one diagram. <laughs> and the diagram is an actual uh, demo, a little application that uh, I built uh, yesterday after having a few beers at Flagstick Pub. It took a couple of hours and uh, I installed it and was able to have it run in, in, in a production environment and just, uh, just before the bars closed. And that, the, that was amazing. That was a very quick and easy experience to build an application like that. And um, on the left of that, you see that we have an Nginx uh, instance. In this case, it's an Nginx Plus thing. And uh, that uh, the web server is uh, serving the static files for the application. It does proxy into the actual application uh, which is running in unit. It has the Nginx Plus dashboard as well. So we would see some metrics and monitoring a few, a few things about it. Now about the app itself. The most interesting part of that is that application, whenever it wants to, it can reconfigure itself uh, through uh, the unit's uh, reconfiguration API, which means uh, once I launch it, I'm not going to touch it anymore, and the application will be doing changes just by itself. Uh, application will probably have a few bugs, since it was written just in a, co a couple of hours. Um, so I will, uh, I will run a little challenge until the end of the day with this app. Okay, so the first, the first thing, I already logged in into the machine here, and I want to show you uh, the JSON file with the unit configuration. All right, so we, uh, in the unit config, uh, it's, uh, it's based on uh, the, uh, the JSON payloads that we're sending into the API socket. In my particular configuration, I opened the API socket on a TCP port. Uh, this is less secure than it should be, so in your production environments, make sure that your API sockets and the control sockets are properly secured. Now, definitely uh, close it down with the firewalls, open it in the protected networks, uh, close it with authentication and such and such. Um, all right, so the first object that I want to talk about, it's called the listener object of, um, uh, in the unit API. That's the item that defines on which IP addresses and which ports are we going to be physically uh, listening in that machine. And in this case, I chose port 8090. Next, uh, in, inside of that um, listener object, I'm passing uh, all of those requests into another object, which is called routes. And I named a new route. I called it uh, Limur. Uh, it's a part of our application. And the thing is, um, in, in, that uh, in that application, in, uh, uh, in, in that route, uh, in, this, uh, in this case, I chose to just create a blank route to take any kind of traffic and pass it into the actual application. The thing is, if you have multiple apps running in that same uh, system, you would probably create a um, different uh, match conditions based on URLs, uh, host names, headers, cookies, IP addresses, uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, but here we're just, uh, we're just taking a very simple approach to pass it directly to the application. Now the most interesting part, the application itself. The application is, is also called Limor. Uh, and uh, here I wrote it in, uh, in PHP. Specifically, I didn't want the application to be too fast. I, I wanted to show you how the application would, uh, would behave, how it would scale differently, how it would present some of, uh, some of the challenges in the real world. So I did choose PHP um, as also as a, as a very simple language, as a very simple thing to write things on. Um, I put that application uh, in this directory in uh, th uh, 3W's uh, app. And 
all the requests that are coming into any URL of uh, that, uh, app, uh, that slash app are going to be handled by the index.php script. Also, I put a couple of other uh, interesting options into this application. And one is uh, the limits, uh, which, uh, which are going to limit the number of uh, keep alive uh, uh, requests within the same connection. Oh, sorry. I'm wrong here. It's going to be uh, limiting uh, the number of requests coming into the same application process before restarting the application process. Um, I just don't want it to be running the same PHP process for too long, so I just shortened it to 100 requests there. The processes object is um, quite a bit important. It's the one that defines how our application processes are going to be scaling out in case of a larger load. And right now, I defined it for the five PHP processes to be there by default and scale it up to 50 if the load is going higher. And the idle timeout is when we're going to be scaling those processes down. Another great and very important object here is called the environment. And this is the one where I'm defining the environment variables for the app. <laughs> this is the sense of how the application is going to be configured when it starts. And then when the application wants itself to be reconfigured, it will call the unit API, it will be, um, it will be, taking the, it will be changing those variables the way it wants, uh, and so on. And uh, I have the different, uh, different color schemes for the app that's, that's going to be changes. That's the red, green, and blue variables here. And also, we are going to be leveling up uh, in the application, going from one level to another, and I'm storing the level there as well as, a, as um, an environment variable. All right, uh, now uh, the next step that I'm going to do, I'm going to see if um, we have uh, an empty uh, unit API uh, listening right there. We have it on port 8060. And what we're going to do in, uh, into the object uh, 8060 slash config, into that one, we're going to put the contents of the file that we just created into that, uh, that running um, into the running unit instance. Since we're going to use the put method, I will uh, use the method put. And I'm going to define the data file with an at, and that's in my directory start.json. All right, so we got the reconfiguration going here. Uh, next, uh, immediately in the processes list, I can see that we already have five of those Lemur applications. All right. Uh, so we got we got the application going. Uh, let me uh, get then uh, another another thing that I want to show you is going to be. Let's do it in. Let's. All right, I'm trying to. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's use this window for uh, for this question. Let's do curl uh, config slash application slash lee more just to see the configuration itself. And I want to take a look at the environment object. Here we go, we got the environment object. Now uh, I just want to watch that object over time. What, uh, hold on. Watch dash n 0.5. And I apologize that it, this is, uh, it's so small, but we will need to put a lot of Inform, uh, a lot of information on this screen. Uh, let's put this one down here. Because I need to put another two items on the screen. Uh, one of them, and here we go, the second one. All right, so the, the first item is gonna be the application itself which is extremely simple. It's a wacky lemur app. And the next one is going to be uh, the dashboard of Nginx Plus, which will show us the current load. Okay, so you see the URL? Open up your phone. Basically, all you need to do is just click on that um, on that lemur, and you will be seeing that uh, uh, once you whack the lemur, the, col the color is going to change and the level is going to go up. <laughs> the thing is, the game is uh, becoming more complicated with uh, with further levels. Uh, 
the, uh, the fun part that is happening uh, on the bottom of the screen, you see that uh, we have the level variable changing and the colors are changing all the time. And the number of processes, we're always scaling them up with load and they are going down on the reconfiguration to get the new environment variables in. Basically, we, uh, we got it to the 24th level. Uh, it's, it's still there, it's still possible to catch. The... Yep, it's working. That's, uh, that's pretty fun. All right, the basic idea is we are showing the very dynamic application here and um, uh, are we going to get to the level 50? Let, let's get to the level 50. All right, and uh, once we get to the level 50, I'll show you uh, the bits and pieces of, uh, the, of the application code that we are doing here. All right. Okay, so the application is extremely simple. When I do uh, the reconfiguration, I just uh, chose to do the curl of that, of the value that we are placing directly into the, uh, into the environment variable. And that is, uh, that's pretty much it. And as far as the app, well, that's the whole script. And as far as the index.html, it's basically uh, a bunch of divs and the three Ajax requests coming to the server. And uh, another item that I wanted to show you, etc, nginx, nginx.conf. Here we go, that's the nginx configuration. Uh, and, and nginx configuration here is absolutely, uh, absolutely simple. It's uh, the most simplistic uh, proxy pass into the uh, unit upstream. Into the unit upstream, we can, uh, we're defining our uh, backend uh, server uh, of, of the application server with Nginx unit. And I have a couple of locations. So one, uh, one is the Nginx plus API under the slash API uh, location. And the other one, just for the convenience of the app, I opened up an endpoint of the unit API with just the level variable and uh, proxy that through Nginx uh, uh, going to, uh, to, the out, to the outside. Basically, if we uh, open the browser and uh, get to the slash level item here, we're just gonna see that we are at level 70 uh, to get just the JSON variable here. All right, and right now we can see that we already, we're serving about 40 something uh, requests per second we already served about 36,000 requests. Uh, the application is written in a way that is absolutely chatty. It's, uh, each of those re uh, refreshes of each of those squares is a request just because we wanted to get the number of requests up and see all, all, all the environment uh, scaling up and down just, to, just with this small crowd using this application. All right. So at, at this point, I want to um, open the floor for questions about uh, Nginx uh, unit. And um, uh, myself and Digger will be uh, happy to answer those questions and uh, uh, not just about this application, but uh, about generally um, the, the unit software. And some people are saying that uh, Unit is uh, the least understood product of our company. For me, it's absolutely simple to use. Hey, I um, uh, just wanted to say it's a very cool feature. I, I really like the dynamic configuration. But uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm wondering uh, which kind of restrictions or security can you apply and, and for that dynamic configuration? Mm -hmm. uh, does, it, does it make sense? Absolutely. Yes, um, there are several things there. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the reconfiguration of unit is done via uh, HTTP. By default, the HTTP um, is open on a Unix socket. The Unix socket by default is owned by root only, which means only your root user would be able to work with that with the, with the default settings. Now, if you want to loosen uh, the level of security, you can open that into the HTTP port, or you can proxy from HTTP port into the Unix socket using the Nginx software. 
Now, since Nginx supports a different types of security and authentication, you can apply all of those security and authentication uh, methods uh, to Nginx in front of unit. You can use Nginx uh, client certificates with SSL. You can use Nginx basic authentication. You can use Nginx plus with uh, JSON web tokens. You can use access lists with allow deny. Uh, and probably I'm forgetting another five different types of secure in your HTTP endpoint, but since it's HTTP, all of the things that we do in security apply nicely to the unit control sockets. Mm -hmm. Any plans of supporting c -sharp .net? Uh Igor, you, you wanna cover the dot, .NET support question? Uh, can, can we... Uh, uh, Turn on this microphone as well. Is this possible? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> as to uh, .NET, uh, uh, languages that um, Unit supports uh, can be divided in two parts. The first one is easy to add to the unit. Uh, uh, this part includes uh, PHP, Perl, uh, Python, uh, Ruby. And the second part is uh, not easy to uh, add to a unit. Uh, this part includes uh, Java, Node.js, um, Go, and uh, .NET uh, is in the second part. So it takes a, uh, a lot of resources to add support uh, of .NET to unit. But uh, from our points of view, the Usage share is uh, of uh, .NET is um, not uh, impressive. So uh, we will uh, eventually will add support uh, for .NET, but not at this stage because it takes a lot of resources and uh, very little impact. Yeah, the current the current list of languages. Um, I I would add a couple of things there for uh, for supporting Java. Uh, it, Java is, is it's in the second bucket of harder to support languages. Uh, the lang languages like PHP, Python, and Ruby, they have ready and uh, set interfaces to work with application servers. Um, application servers like um, like Apache, UISGI, Unicorn, Passengers, uh, all all of them and a multitude of others, they um, they already. S uh, set the ways on how to connect uh, to those scripts. And uh, those scripts, um, th they have set protocols for all of that. Uh, tapping into that process is fairly easy. That's it, the, mm -hmm. These languages are, uh, are designed to be embedded. Uh, actually, they have interfaces uh, designed to be embedded in some web server or some application server. And Java, Node.js, uh, and Go are usually run like standalone server. Servers, so they they have have no interfaces to easily embed in something else. This this reason and dot not is the same in the same uh, camp. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, basically running the standalone <coughs> server. Um, many of our uh, of engineers they are uh, asking that question: Why do you need an application server for Go? My Go app is an application server. However, if you look into uh, the ways how people want to uh, implement that in production, the operational aspect of running those applications, it might become a nightmare. When you need to change the certificate in your Go app, you might need to recompile or restart it. When you need to change the network settings of it, you might need to recompile or restart it. And in many cases, uh, with those apps, uh, with Node.js, with uh, Go, with Java, you need to make a restart, make a recompilation or anything like that. And this is a disruptive process uh, to the application server in, uh, environment. With, um, uh, when you treat those applications uh, within unit and you have a consistent way of managing your apps uh, with the dynamic reconfiguration features, the process of restarting of your application becomes as easy as making the API call and unit takes care of, of that restart whenever it's needed and if needed. Mm -hmm. um, really good presentation. Um, so on that note that you just mentioned, so if we were talking about how this would be integrated with a service mesh, because you have lots of different developers creating different microservices, 
they're yeah. all connecting to each other. How do you see unit being a part of that, if any? Uh, that's um, that's a good question. The, the ways on how unit can be used by our, um, uh, but by the community, they are unlimited. I mean, you can uh, you can start using it in various ways. Uh, in uh, well, I, I can give you another great example. Yesterday, uh, Timo Stark was uh, uh, was making a, uh, the presentation about the UIs on unit and the SDKs that he built for his own purpose. And uh, if, you, if, you didn't, uh, if you didn't attend that presentation, definitely look it up on YouTube uh, very soon. We're gonna upload that uh, in some time and uh, uh, take a look at, at the example on how this software can use in, in a ways various and different from what we show here. And uh, since it's open source and free, it's uh, up to you to decide on how it's gonna be used in your environment. Can you speak a little bit to the uh, observability, traceability functions that unit is potentially going to be exposing uh, across those various uh, uh, languages? Mm -hmm. um, about tracing? Uh, about stats? stats. Uh, currently, currently, we have no support for stats, but we plan it. Yeah, about which, uh, which metrics, uh, which specific metrics is still, uh, still to be decided. All right. Well, if there are if there are no other questions, I will start uh, uh, the challenge. Until the end of the happy hour, this system is going to be running. Uh, break it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, get some some nice and fun prize there to whoever gets the the most breaking of that system that uh, that we can find, and it has bugs. It has bugs. You can ramp up the levels very easily. You can get get to the million levels quickly. Well, that's that's the challenge for all. <laughs> all right, that's it. Thank you.